started. Hi everyone, thank you for joining my talk. Uh, I hope you had a good lunch, not too tired after <laughs> the last crazy night. And uh, as you can see, we are going to talk about web security. And uh, we see some technical stuff, but also some uh, statistics about what is <coughs> web security today. Uh, before starting, just a couple of words about me. So I'm research and development engineer at Bonitasoft. I hope you, you already join us uh, during those days. We had uh, a stand as uh, a person. And um, what is Bonitasoft? If you don't know, we are the BPM open source world leader. And we have a solution mainly based on Eclipse. So that's why we have this link since a long time ago. And, and it's a successful one. And before joining Bonitasoft, I used to work as a web penetration tester. I don't know if you know what it is. Anyone? No. Basically, uh, yeah, my, my old company, um, I was sending to, like, try to hack our customers' websites. So that was my job. I was, you know, try to hack uh, things and find vulnerabilities. And, you know, of course, the, the objective was to provide a list of countermeasures and how to fix things before a real hacker would attack one day. So that was my job. And I put those knowledge in place for my new company, so Bonitasoft, to, um, you know, see the overall product security. Uh, so I know it's, it's after lunch, so let's start uh, slowly. So <laughs> a nice commit strip. Uh, I hope those, those you know, names are familiar to some of you. But basically, this is a, a security checklist. And uh, you know, we can have many technical things, anti-SQL injection protection, SSL, uh, AS encryption, password hash. But at the end, I hope no one of you is a product manager. But anyway, I'm a friend of a product manager. <laughs> but uh, the, the point, uh, this is a funny uh, slide. Um, but uh, there is something real behind. It means that we can put in place a lot of technical things to be protected against attacks. But the human error is always one of the most dangerous uh, traits uh, of a company. So this is a, you know, a human error because maybe the product manager in this case is not aware of, you know, if you send an email to someone just, you know, you want to work about something and you send your database and encrypt it, it will be dangerous. So um, uh, how many of you know some of those names like SQL injection, XSS? Wow, great. So we are, <laughs> we are in a good place. So let's start with some uh, statistics, some figures. So did you know that the average organizational cost of a single data breach in US is $5,400,000. One single successful data breach. And uh, when you store a database, each record of a single database costs $277 to the company. So you can imagine there are a lot of money behind and uh, you have to, to know this to, 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 to react. It, you, know, you, you can imagine it costs a lot to your company. And what is this uh, 10,000? Is the cyber attacks attempts that against the US Navy since this talk has begun. So in not even three minutes, <laughs> the US Navy uh, has been attempted to attack 10,000 times. So it's, it's incredible how it's, it's growing exponentially the, 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 the danger for, for our company. And that was in US. In Europe, uh, those are some data from um, a phenomenal institute study. They are, you know, interviewed some companies, try to, you know, find some figures. And in, uh, in Germany, we got $4 million for a single data breach. France, UK, and Italy. So, it, 
all those things in mind, we, we can think about um, what the, are the, the impacts of those attacks can have uh, on, our, on our companies, on our assets. So we got reputation and brand damage, of course a loss of productivity, loss of revenue, and so on. So keeping this in mind will uh, help us to uh, think first and try to put some countermeasure in place before it's too late, before we have to pay uh, some money for that. It is not just about money, it's also about our customers' data. And you know, th those are some examples, a few examples of the, the attacks we had uh, in the 2014. We got the eBay um, thing that they be stolen 333 million record of users. We got the iCloud uh, celebrity uh, leakage. I don't know if you, for sure you heard about it. It was everywhere. And Snapchat, Snapchat, uh, which is, is very interesting because they base their business on the fact that we can exchange pictures and they will be deleted after 30 seconds, all right? So that's the, do you know Snapchat, yeah? So that was their, uh, you know, main business. It, their main business. But via a third party app that was like doing some storage of these pictures, the, uh, a group of hackers hacked this website and there were 200,000 Snapchat photos on the internet. And you can imagine which kind of pictures there were when you use Snapchat, yeah? Because you know how it's, it's gonna be deleted in 30 seconds, so, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, the, um, so there is a funny thing, which is a little bit less fun is that most of the users of Snapchat are underage. And you can imagine which kind of picture underage guys, uh, they were exchanging each other and they are on the net. So it's very important to, to be careful with your, your customer data and preserve things. But why? Why all this? Because we hear every day on the news, on the internet, Twitter is full of those attacks and we see that it's important, but why we are still in 2014 still vulnerable to those things? Well, uh, it's because um, security has to be taken into account, but it's not the reality today. I mean, um, when you are, uh, let's say, a, a, an early stage startup, you're always in rush with like this guy. So in rush to develop this new, the brand new feature that will make you sign a great contract, or you know, close a good deal. So you are focused on developing features, and there's has to look nice and be great. But the point is that security should be taken into account in each of those, uh, you know, in a standard uh, development life cycle, because we usually react uh, once an attack has been done. I did. If at the beginning I say, yeah, we. I will do security stuff at the end because it's not the priority, it will not make me uh, rich or whatever. I wait, I wait, till the day in where I am attacked. And that's, that's why we see uh, a lot of uh, money loss and, and whatever. So if you don't want to lose a lot of money and if, you, if uh, your image, you want to preserve your image and your brand name, you should take into account security since the beginning, since the requirement analysis, the design, and whatever. Like the Q in, uh, in a standard QA um, environment, like they, they, they do test our, our features for no regression stuff or, um, or bugs and so on, they should do also security testing at this time. But um, unfortunately, it's a bit difficult sometimes, especially if you are not aware about things. So don't be afraid, you are not alone. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of things outside on the net that can help us to you know, change a little bit this behavior and this state of mind. And for example, we got the OWASP, uh, the Open Web Application Security Project that I think is the reference for those things. It's the Wikipedia for web security stuff. 
Uh, on, on the website, you can find user guides, we can find the checklist to follow, we can find uh, also videos to how to detect, how to test your own application to see if you are vulnerable to something. And we have also um, an Eclipse plugin that we make, that can make a static analysis of your code in order to see if in some place you have some of the most, uh, of the well-known vulnerabilities or, or WASP. Um, well, that's just a quick example of what you can find on the website. For each uh, vulnerability, you will have some description, you will see if uh, you are vulnerable, for example, to cross-site request forgery and how you can prevent it, and so on. So, um, another thing that is very nice, uh, they, they regularly update a top 10 of the most dangerous uh, vulnerabilities, so you can go there, and for each of those categories, you will find a description like the one I showed you before. And um, it would be nice to see all of them, but we're going to focus on the uh, one of oh, this is the number five, is the cross-site <laughs> request forgery attack. Why? But because, uh, as you see, uh, as I saw before, all of you, uh, most of, them, all of you uh, already know the XSS, the SQL injection attack. Um, anyone already heard about cross-site request forgery? One, two, three, four. Uh, you are no bad. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, this is less known, but um, it's very, very dangerous as well because we can have some impacts like the one I described here. So let's uh, have a look. I will try to, to make a demo of what is uh, the cross-site request forgery attack. So I'm on this website, which is... Um, in, is a vulnerable website, but it's just for, you know, try to, um, you know, learn how to hack websites. So it's on <laughs> purpose, it's free, everyone can use it to, to you know, try their skills. Um, so we'll start this hack.me, uh, hack .me is the, <laughs> the thing. It will create a, a sandbox and, um, yeah. Great. So this is Acme, and uh, I'm a, a simple user. I can have a look to pictures and, and so on. I can log in as an administrator. I'm logged in, and I can, for example, create new users like uh, hello, hello and so on. So, I'm logged in. Now, uh, this is from the point of view of the victim. If I go, uh, now if I'm the attacker, I will, um, I will create, I have to update this because we refreshed it. So, the attacker, what he does, he will clone one very popular website, for example, and um, which can be Yahoo website, and they will add something inside. He will add uh, a partic he will inject some tags, and wh what we do, he will send, for example, an email to the victim, like, hey, have a look, dude. Uh, by the way, Hide My Ass is a very interesting website. They, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't know, they provide like proxying stuff, uh, anonymous services, uh, email that will expire in one day, you know, it's, it's a very nice point. <laughs> anyway, so in Night My Ass, <laughs> I created a victim 29, uh, 10, 2014, and, you know, I received those, this mail, they say, hey, dude, have a look to this website, it's the new Yahoo website. So, I will have a look. All right. So um, it seems to be the standard Yahoo web page, but in reality, if everything was all right, without the, 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 the victim he didn't understand anything, I'd be able to create a new user on the website of the victim. So 
here, my, my, my user is simply browse this website, and from behind the scene, I've been able to create a new user. Been using the session of the, of the victim. So now, if I'm the attacker, I'd say, all right, I will try to, to log in with this new brand user I, I just created, just to see if it really works. So I open a new tab. And uh, so now, uh, as you can see, I'm guest. So I, I'm not logged in. And I will try to use the, the new user I created. So user is I act you, and the password is I'm so strong. <laughs> because <laughs> it's very, it's very uh, proud of it. And voila. So I'm logged in. I'm an administrator, and the victim, it was completely transparent for the victim. That's, that's the, the dangerous part. Uh, I, I didn't understand anything, and I've been hacked. So what, what's behind? Why it happened? So I try to, to uh, represent in this schema what happened behind. So the user logs on mywebsite.com. Mywebsite.com, we send a session cookie. And now I'm able to make API calls to the server, like anything. Now I go on my attacker web page. In the attacker web page, uh, what happened is that the fake Yahoo thing that we saw, he has an iframe, an iframe pointing to the victim website. So we reuse the user session to make blind calls. And it will, it will manage to make APIs. APIs call successfully on the server. And so maybe uh, to understand better, we can see the code of the, of the attacker. Right. Where is it? Yeah. So um, as I saw, here we have yahoo .fr.html, which is a clone of the real yahoo.fr website. What he did, he just add this iframe, src, add user, cross-site request for .html. All right, so simple putting an iframe. The iframe, what it contains? It contains this, which is a form, a simple form. With the action, the target website method post, and it will inject username and password as we, we see. So I was expecting to add a new user which is called iActive with a password I'm so strong. And I will add, and it, there is um, an automatic submit of the form. All right, so simply browsing this website, it will make this form uh, application send. And since, since we have where it is, where it is, where it is. <laughs> All right. Since the, the, in the browser I already got a session open on, on, on the real, uh, the victim application, it works. It will reuse the cookie and make a proper call. So do you, did you all get what was the attack or I lost anyone? It's all right. So why it works? Because it's a web browser feature that we can use it on good purpose. For example, the plus, or Google Plus one, or the like or retweet buttons, they all work like that, but in a good way. So um, the session is kept alive from multiple browser tabs. And so there should be a solution. And to find a solution, we, we, we see the, the weaknesses of the attack. The, the, so, the, as we can see, the attacker makes blind calls. They just try to, to call the, the API and see if he, he can manage to, to create his user. So he will not be able to read the response and read the session cookie. Based on those assumptions, here what happens. 
we got the, the user logs in, in my site.com, and in the response, start the login, I will have an XAPI token in the response header. This XAPI token is a randomly generated number which is very difficult to brute force, to guess. So I will store it you know, client side, and now I'm able for sure to make any API calls by resending each time this XAPI token. If now I go on the fake IO page, this page is not able to read the response header, so we're not able to regenerate the XAPI token. So it will make this blind call, as we saw, but without sending this token inside. So server side, it will check and it will be rejected. So um, this is the solution we, we put in place in, uh, in our solution in Bonita. And yeah, basically this is our portal and uh, I'm logged in as an administrator. Oh, sorry. I'm logged in as an administrator exactly as I was <laughs> in the other website. And um, if now I go on the same, oh, sorry, <laughs> on the same website, now targets our portal. I do. I made this call. As I can see, I got uh, not authorized for sure because uh, in the request header we have the session cookie that I got on, on, on our portal, because it, as we saw, it works like that, but we don't have this new spatial token inside. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty simple to, to, to find a solution for those things, if you know. So that's why it's very important to be aware that, that vulnerability exists, and it's very simple to, to, to put in place. I, I will not show you all the code, but you can imagine we have a uh, server side, we have a generation of the, um, of the token, and we send it in the, in the response header, then we check if the, the token that has been sent is the, the right one. Client side, the same. We receive this XAPI token and we will resend it at each time, at each request. So, um, yeah, it's not so complex, but again, it's just um, a matter of knowledge. So we already saw, uh, seen the, those slides the, the, on our code. And then for, for the end, uh, we have that, of course, the, the Eclipse Foundation is not uh, a part of the, those things is aware of those vulnerabilities. So they, uh, there is a project we call Labs One, which is um, a static code analysis. I was saying in, in the introduction, in where we have a vulnerability source analysis, in where we see which part of the code could represent a, an attack, a vulnerability sync, which is how I could propagate this error on another part of the code and the provenance tracker, which is the link of those two words to see if a, a, pro, a, a, a possible attack, it really works at the end. So this plugin is for sure for free, and if you want to find all the <coughs> more information, those are the, the links. You got a, um, a user guide and whatever. Um, so for example, I hope you, you can see in this case, uh, sorry, I originally assumed you were scanning like the website, but this scanner scans the code, Java EE code. Yeah, Java EE code. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. That would be very, very nice to have something like that, even in Eclipse for GS JavaScript application, or you know, because as we saw in many talks also during this conference, we have. Uh, JavaScript is taking the, the, the majority of the development for the web things. So I'm sure it will evolve, this project will evolve also to cover those, you know, JavaScript area. But for the moment, it's Java e, uh, static check, which is, is something anyway. 
better than nothing. It's the only uh, real, I, 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 I run several research, and it's the real, the only plugin I found for Eclipse that does this, which is not bad anyway. So you can see here, he say, yeah, be careful at this time when you read the username and then you make a straight query without escaping this uh, input, you can have an SQL injection, for example, which is the typical example of an SQL injection. So, um, what, what was uh, so all about is that we have to, don't be afraid uh, about security, and, but don't carry on. We cannot carry on like this because, uh, as we saw, there are many, a lot of impacts, and it's not easy to, uh, to, to, to fix things after. It's always like that, but if you wait to be act, act and then to fix things, that will be very expensive, and the, your reputation will be impacted. So react and, um, and be safe. <laughs> so I think. Ah, it's good. Uh, if you have any question, I'll be happy to ask, to answer. Yeah. Anyone? Um, yeah. Do you have any plans to check also the other frameworks uh, or the code? Uh, <laughs> there, is, there is something outside the Eclipse world. So that's why I, I, didn't, I didn't present it. But there are things. There are also things like um, they are some kind of proxy that you run your web application. Then you run this proxy. And it will intercept all those calls that we made from the client to the server. And then it will try to hack things automatically. Like a, a web penetration tester automatic, like a burp. I don't know if anyone, yeah. Burp is this, is like a kind of proxy that we, we use to pen test website, to catch requests and try to you know, change some parameters or inject some code as we saw and, and whatever. Um, yeah, there are things for JavaScript and for web application in general. This is, you know, for Java. Yeah. 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 It's it's limited to the um, web application you can run on your browser. Because a, a browser functionality. When you when we saw the, the victim website established a, a, a connection, so you got a session cookie. Then you open a new tab. And reusing the session cookie will make you do those cookies. Post yeah. Uh, yeah, but it could work even not without forms. Yeah, even for REST so APIs. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. 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 That's why uh, if you see a REST API authentication checklist even on the OWASP uh, website, they always say you, you have to authenticate and identify the caller of the other request, like this. You, you, you do, like for example, base authentication to, to say uh, who, I, who you are, but then the web services or the REST server or whatever, you have to send this token back. Because for the further calls, you will, you know, Say, I know uh, who, who I am, and this is the token you, to you, you gave me. So this is very important. Yeah. Did I answer to the question? All right. Yeah. Um, just a general question. Um, yeah. If I open a new tab from the existing one, he will get all the information from the first one, so he gets also the request token? Like if I have a web app and I want to say, 
I want to add an order, so I go right mouse click, open a new tab. Does he get the request header also? Um, he will, for sure, like in uh, in, if, in iframe, you say, or no, no, I mean, you have a link. In the same application, I go in the second tab. Yeah. And then I do something there, and then I go to this Porsche uh, site. Will they have still the request copy? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So in this case, it could be actually stolen. And yeah, because for example, what they what, what um, another kind of implementation of the countermeasure is to store this XAPI token in the cookie as well. Because how we see, how we seen, uh, how we saw that the attacker you cannot read the cookie. So if you store the XAPI token in this cookie, mm -hmm. then you you open a new tab of the same application. Mm -hmm. You can read. You will be will be able to read this. Cookie and resend the good okay. oh, so XAPI token. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, you can do like for example, the, the, uh, what we saw that there it was a Java application, but for Angular JS, uh, there is a configuration. You see, enable the anti-cross-site request forgery attack by default. This, if your server is configured to send. Uh, an XAPI token at the login phase, it will be completely transparent for you. Because it will read this, it will create a session cookie with this information inside, and we resend the XAPI token at each time. So you, don't, you shouldn't really care about it. But when you go on the AngularJS website, and you see cross site request for data, ah, whatever. <laughs> it's always like that. <laughs> No, don't be afraid and, and do it. It's very important. Anyone else? Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.